You might think that the world of particle physics was in disarray, lost in a maze of particles and forces that make up our universe not too long ago. The confusion was real, the progress seemed stagnant, but then came a beacon of hope, the Particle Physics Project's Prioritization Panel Report. This report was a game changer, a navigation chart into the future of particle physics. It whispered of transforming the Large Hadron Collider, a giant in its own right, into an even more formidable entity, the High Luminosity LHC. The new avatar would be capable of collecting nearly twice the amount of data each year, opening the doors to more profound explorations of the Higgs boson particle and the search for new particles beyond the known standard model. But wait, there's more. The standard model, a framework that has been around since the 60s, is not infallible. It leaves behind many unanswered questions like the origin of neutrino mass, the nature of dark matter, and the asymmetry between matter and antimatter in the universe. These questions, my dear listeners, are not only relevant to particle physics, but also to cosmology. And the answers to these might be hidden within the earliest stages of our cosmic history. To extract these answers, scientists are now using a plethora of techniques, from building high-energy colliders to cosmic observations, from searching for rare interactions to measuring neutrino oscillations. But the most intriguing thing, the real game changer, is, well, that's a story for another time. Stay tuned. What's up, my amazing and curious folks? Ready for another journey into the heart of knowledge? I'm your guide, Caesar, and with me is the ever insightful Sonia. Are you ready, Sonia? Hi there, curious minds. Always ready, Caesar. Fantastic. Remember to subscribe to the Curiosity Wonderland and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of our daily explorations into the world's most fascinating topics. Let's dive right in. Looking back just 10 years, particle physics was pretty chaotic. The Large Hadron Collider, or LHC for short, had just fired up. Sure, they found the Higgs boson, the last missing particle predicted by the standard model, but that's where the successes ended. It failed to provide any solid evidence for theories that would take us beyond the standard model. So the standard model, it's been around since the 1960s? Yes, it has, but it's not perfect it leaves a lot of questions unanswered. For instance, we still don't understand the origin of neutrino mass, the nature of dark matter, or why there's a matter-antimatter asymmetry in the universe. Those sound like pretty big questions. They definitely are. And for a while, progress in addressing these questions was slow, both on the experimental and theoretical fronts. What's more, particle physicists seemed at a loss as to what steps to take next. But that's no longer the case? Correct. A turning point came with the release of the Particle Physics Project's Prioritization Panel Report, or P5 for short. This report mapped out a course for the decade ahead, tackling all these pressing issues while also fostering a healthy environment for particle physics to flourish, not just in the United States, but worldwide. So what's the future looking like? One major goal is to upgrade the LHC into what's being called the High Luminosity LHC. This enhanced version will be able to collect nearly double the data each year compared to the LHC's first 10 years of life. But even more exciting, the P5 report also recommends supporting the development of even more advanced accelerator designs for the future. So big things are on the horizon? Absolutely. The field of particle physics has a bright future ahead of it. We're on the cusp of gaining a deeper understanding of our universe on a fundamental level than ever before. But, there's a common misconception that fundamental science is over and that theorists are only working on unsupported ideas. That couldn't be further from the truth. It's an exciting time to be a particle physicist. So, let's dive deeper into the standard model. It's often misunderstood as a complete theory, but that's not really the case. It's more of a structural framework. Sort of like the skeleton of a building? That's a good analogy. The standard model tells us that there are three generations of fermions, divided into quarks and charged and neutral leptons. It's the bosons that mediate the strong, weak, and electromagnetic forces. But doesn't that mean we've figured everything out? Not quite. To truly understand how the standard model plays out in our universe, we need to delve into the details. 
We need to measure things like the masses of these fundamental particles, the properties of mixing between quarks, and various species of neutrinos. And then there's the question of violated symmetries. Violated symmetries? That sounds like a band name. Haha, -ha, it does. But in our context, symmetry violations refer to certain fundamental physical properties that differ from their mirror images. And I guess the standard model doesn't explain everything? Right. For instance, the universe was once far more energetic than even the highest energy collisions achieved by the Large Hadron Collider. Then there's dark matter and dark energy that aren't accounted for by the standard model. And remember that matter-antimatter asymmetry I mentioned earlier? That's still a puzzle, despite all observed particle physics reactions showing a symmetry in that regard. So, lots more to figure out then. Absolutely. And that's why this field is so exciting. There's so much we've learned, but so much more to discover. Now, we've been scrutinizing some intriguing theories that could potentially solve these puzzles. But so far, experimental particle physics has set some vital restrictions on these beyond the standard model scenarios. That sounds like progress. It is. Even when we eliminate theories that don't pan out, we're still learning. For instance, the original form of supersymmetry which sought to resolve the hierarchy problem isn't shaping our reality. Neither is the original peche quinn symmetry that was designed to solve the solve the strong CP problem, nor the grand unified theory of SU5 that attempted to explain matter-antimatter asymmetry. These solutions are simpler than the realities we're observing. So, the answers are more complex than we initially thought? Precisely. But these are still crucial mysteries intertwined with particle physics, cosmology, and where they intersect. Consider this. The most intense conditions in cosmic history happen just a fraction of a second after the start of the Big Bang. A fraction of a second? That's hard to comprehend. Indeed it is. And it's during this fleeting moment that the fundamental quantum nature of our universe was imprinted. It's likely that the answers to many questions we ponder today, like the nature of dark matter and dark energy, the origin of neutrino mass and the physics of the Higgs boson, are all encoded in these early stages of cosmic history. So how do we go about solving these mysteries? Well, there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Of course, we have the powerhouse approach of building high-energy colliders that can maximize energy, sensitivity, and collision rates. But we also adopt more subtle strategies, like hunting for rare interactions and nuclear recoils, studying neutrino oscillations, and observing cosmic phenomena that are connected to these ancient imprints. The quest to unlock these mysteries is pushing us to develop new technologies and experiments to probe nature like never before. If we aim to truly understand how nature operates, we need to ask the right questions in a way that forces the universe to reveal its secrets. Can you give an example of how we do that? Absolutely, one prime example is the way the quantum fluctuations that were expanded across the universe during cosmic inflation. These fluctuations gave rise to the density variations that we can see in the cosmic microwave background. And these variations eventually form the stars, galaxies, and other large-scale structures we see in the universe today. So we're actually looking at the fingerprints of the birth of the universe. Exactly. This is the best picture we have of how the universe behaves. But we can only access the information that's within our cosmic horizon, which is all part of the same region where inflation ended about 13.8 billion years ago. And when we investigate these questions, we need to balance theory and experiment, right? Yes. It's all about striking a balance between theory, which tries to understand how different scenarios would alter the phenomena we can observe, and experiment, which measures these phenomena. We also need to set a roadmap for future research and support future researchers while serving different aspects of the community. What, what sort of exciting things are we looking at right now? Well, one of the most thrilling areas lies at the intersection of particle physics and cosmology. It's the quantum imprints left on the largest cosmic scales by the final moments of cosmic inflation. But that's a topic for another day. We've already detected, measured, and started to understand the density and temperature fluctuations that inflation left behind. But there's also another type of fluctuations that inflation produces. 
gravitational wave fluctuations. Could you explain a bit more about what these gravitational wave fluctuations are? Certainly. These are also known as tensor modes. Every inflationary model predicts the same spectrum of gravitational waves, but different models predict different amplitudes. The next generation efforts to measure these gravitational wave signals, or the lack thereof, on the radiation left over from the Big Bang are among the highest priority science efforts today. That sounds fascinating. Are there any other major projects happening in the field right now? Definitely. One of the biggest particle physics projects happening in the United States today is DUNE, the Deep Underground Neutrino Experiment. That sounds intriguing. What's the goal of DUNE? The aim of DUNE is quite complex. It starts with generating a particle beam composed of a large number of unstable particles known as muons. These muons decay and produce muon neutrinos, among other particles. These neutrinos are then sent through the Earth, where they get a chance to interact with matter. Finally, the neutrinos that arrive at a distant destination are measured with a special type of detector known as a time projection chamber. Why go through all this trouble? Well, it turns out that neutrinos of one specific species, electron, muon, or tau neutrinos, don't remain the same as they propagate, but oscillate between these various flavors. This kind of long baseline neutrino experiment represents a huge leap over all current efforts. As the neutrino is the only known particle physics phenomenon that already goes beyond the standard model, it's a puzzle that compels us to investigate it further. The P5 report suggests the need to build a machine acting like a Higgs factory to study the standard model particle. But investing deeply in just one proposed next-generation collider isn't their recommendation. What's their take? They recommend supporting the technology development of various accelerator designs to see if there's an advancement that makes one design superior. What are these designs? Currently, there are three main classes of accelerator design under consideration. The first is a future circular collider, which would be a much larger ring than the Large Hadron Collider and could collide either electron or positrons or hadrons. And the others? The second is a future linear collider that would collide electrons with positrons, leading to a very pristine signal but doesn't push the energy frontier. The third is a future circular muon collider which would collide muons with anti-muons, leading to high energies and pristine signals, but with the lowest number of total collisions due to muons' unstable nature. That's quite a list. Is there a preferred one? It's not about a preferred option. Depending on the advancement in technology, if there's a significant increase in energy gain per meter, a linear collider would be favored. An advance in muon luminosity would favor the muon collider option cleverly named a muon shot. That's fascinating. What about the search for dark matter? Construction of at least one next-generation dark matter direct detection experiment is also a high priority. A lot of people think these experiments have been failures, but that's not how science works. We learn and improve with each attempt. So it's all about continuous learning and improvement? Precisely. The journey of science is as important as the destination if not more. It's quite astounding how science has progressed in the past 30 years. Our sensitivity to any exotic, massive particle that interacts with normal, atom-based matter has increased by a factor of 320,000. This is indeed the best null result in science history. That's impressive. I heard about these G3 experiments. What are their goals? The goal of these next-generation G3 experiments is to become so sensitive that they're detecting what scientists call the neutrino fog, which is what cosmic neutrinos, neutrinos caused by radioactivity within the Earth, and neutrinos emitted by the sun will induce inside the detector. That sounds like a daunting task. Indeed, it's challenging. But what's fascinating is that while these experiments were initially motivated by the search for WIMP-like dark matter, this approach is capable of detecting much more than just those favored models of dark matter. It can also detect other heavy, exotic dark matter candidates, like cue balls and wimp zillas. So we're casting a wider net for dark matter. Absolutely. Particle physicists are learning from the mistakes of prior generations and casting a wider, broader net instead of assuming we know what dark matter is going to be. 
that's quite an open-minded approach. Yes, and it doesn't stop there. The community also recognizes the vital importance of multi-messenger astronomy. Multi-messenger astronomy? What's that about? Right now, there are three unique types of signals that can arrive from sources throughout the cosmos. Light in all of its forms, gravitational waves, and cosmic particles, including in the form of neutrinos that can come from solar system, galactic, and even extragalactic sources. While the first two types of signals are mostly confined to the realm of astronomy, the ability to detect cosmic particles is of supreme interest to the particle physics community. At the South Pole lies the Ice Cube Detector, the best in the world at detecting cosmic neutrinos. It has already produced our first galactic map in neutrinos and has found neutrinos from an extragalactic source, a blazar. That's an active supermassive black hole, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. An active supermassive black hole whose jet is pointed directly at us. Upgrading Ice Cube to the next generation of scope and sensitivity will enable an unprecedented study of neutrino properties and the greatest multi-messenger astronomy program in history. I hear that if a supernova occurs within the local group, this next generation Ice Cube could be a goldmine of scientific data. Absolutely, it could yield untold scientific riches. And not just that, they're also planning to maintain a balanced portfolio within a sane, sober budget. The particle physicists aren't asking for a significant increase in funding, but are keeping to an annual funding level for the next decade. That sounds very responsible. It's not just about throwing money at the problem, but making targeted investments. Precisely, they aim to make targeted investments across various efforts that give the physics community and the general public the greatest scientific bang for their buck. It's essential to invest in basic, fundamental research as it leads to greater economic activity, technological development, and scientific leadership in the world. It seems like after all these years, with the path laid out in the P5 report, particle physics just might have a bright future in the United States. All the planning, the thorough research, the intelligent allocation of resources, it's all pointing towards a promising future for this fascinating field. It's exciting to think about what discoveries might be just around the corner in the world of particle physics. The anticipation is palpable. Absolutely. The pursuit of knowledge, the desire to understand the universe, it's an endless journey. But with each step, with each discovery, we get a little bit closer to understanding the grand puzzle that is our universe. We are truly standing on the shoulders of the giants who came before us and we're ready to explore new frontiers. The universe awaits. We've journeyed together through the fascinating world of particle physics. We've seen how, despite earlier setbacks, the field is now on the brink of some truly groundbreaking discoveries, thanks to the roadmap set out by the Particle Physics Project's Prioritization Panel. From transforming the Large Hadron Collider to probing the mysteries of neutrino masses, dark matter, and the asymmetry between matter and antimatter, we are on the precipice of new frontiers. And with the path laid out in the P5 report, we're set to get the maximum bang for our buck, all the while supporting the future torchbearers of the field, our early career scientists. Who knows what secrets of the universe they'll reveal. So keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground, because particle physics has a bright future and we're all aboard for the ride. It's incredible to think about where this journey might lead us. Thank you all for joining us on this thrilling exploration. Remember to blast that like button, leave your comments, and share this episode with your friends. Let's share the wonder and mystery of our universe together. And in the spirit of particle physics, let's continue to ask tough questions, seek new knowledge, and always, always stay curious. Until next time, this is Caesar And Sonia Guimaraes. Signing off. See you in the next episode of Curiosity Wonderland. We gathered all this fascinating information from an article titled Particle Physics Finally Charts a Healthy Path Forward, penned by Ethan Siegel on the Big Think site, published on March 28, 2024. You can find the full URL in the video description if you want to dive deeper into this subject. Now, I'm signing off. <laughs>